So getting into volume three of the eminence in the shadow, of course, I will be covering what happens in this volume and just give you my general thoughts and opinions and breaking down some major events that I thought were most interesting. And of course, I will do more deeper dives into specifics in later videos, as I always do with these kind of light novel reviews. But with this particular volume, it kind of breaks up into two major arcs for me, at least that's how I see it, is basically the sort of the Red Moon or the Vampire arc as for short, and then also as I'd like to put it as like the capitalist as a joke, the capitalist arc or just the banking money kind of printing arc which also has a new character introduced which is a very attractive nice looking white fox girl, the spirit fox. And I will say the only thing that's kind of sad about that arc is that I feel like we'll never really get to see uh, her name is Yuki Me. I, I can't pronounce the same myself. Y U K I M E is the spelling, but I just really like the aesthetics from the actual light novel art itself because I really love the, sort of the white fox kind of aesthetics and the outfit that goes with her. And her backstory is very interesting as well, but it's just one of those where I do feel like a lot of characters that get introduced kind of you never really get to see again and, and maybe I'm wrong maybe we will get to see more of them there are two more volumes after this that are currently released one English one Japanese so unless later on there's more stuff that allows these introductions of characters we'll just have to wait and see but getting into the first arc which is the sort of as I call it the red moon arc which is mainly to do with vampires I feel like it follows that same thing that I was just talking about. It's kind of like its own sort of arc that has Sid going into this situation. Of course, always looking for ways of making some quick cash on the side. And you do find out a little bit of lore about the vampires and how it kind of melds into some of the other stuff that's to do with certain gods and powers and races and all that kind of stuff and other issues that certain other individuals that are part of Shadow Garden that are trying to sort of uncover and so there's that kind of fun world building but I do feel like as much as I love vampire lore and the interesting stuff that can be done with vampires in stories like for example Dance in a Vampire Bund is one of my favorite mangas when it comes to vampires and werewolves particularly vampires because it takes a more grounded gritty realistic look at a vampire society in a modern day society and being that sort of secret organization this one's a little bit more different in that it's kind of like supernatural powers and them destroying and there's this kind of thing of well there's vampires that live amongst humans and then those that don't based on the fact that those that consume blood and those that don't consume blood those that don't consume blood can actually stay out in the light because of certain other factors that impact their body but they kind of are basically like human-like in their powers and abilities and so there's the vampires that are basically human-like and then there's those that consume the blood that become almost rabid animals that lose control but gain all these additional powers but then also have the negative effects that they can't go in the sunlight. So it's an interesting spin but I do feel like it's one of those where I don't think we'll ever really see much more of vampire type stuff in this story which is a little bit sad but I can kind of understand with how it's structured maybe there might be some more stuff but how the story really built it was that vampires were very rare like an endangered species kind of thing and they were basically on the brink of extinction but that wasn't really what stood out to me because i really like talking about the things that really stood out in each volume and the one thing that stood out to me is the sister and how in this backstory chapter she goes over her interactions with sid and then growing up and how she would get into really bad situations and Sid would always be there to save her and so I kind of thought to myself when reading I was like why hasn't she kind of twigged not that he's shadow but that there's something more going on with him like he's hiding power and she kind of sees it as he's much more better than what people play him out to be because he kind of looks weak so like a side character which is the whole point it's his whole sort of role-playing thing going on that he wants to be that side character that's the background but she sees him much more differently which kind of builds that bond that you can kind of feel like there's a bit of a maybe a sister sister brother complex kind of, like she's got a bit of a complex going on where she has like a bit of a thing for not like romantically but just very close and very protective and over the top maybe it might develop into something else but have to wait and see 
but I just wonder why she hasn't kind of tweaked that there's maybe a little bit more power that he's possessing that he doesn't want others to see. It's not that I'm expecting her to know that he's Shadow, but just that clearly when they've been in situations that are really dire and he just somehow always is there to help and save the day, maybe he's a little bit stronger than what he's letting on and she'd maybe twig to it. Maybe that's something that maybe she might slowly piece together bit by bit, but I do find the relationship between them quite interesting, especially from the earlier volumes where she can be very pushy, dominating kind of thing, especially in the volume two where she's kind of like almost like strangling him. It's like some weird foreplay going on. So I feel like their relationship is quite interesting, but I also have a bit of a theory that based on the fact that I've been watching the anime in kind of in sync with the light novels, there's something that will probably come up that I want to kind of throw my theory out, but we'll just have to wait and see. I kind of have a weird theory about the sister and her, and the relationship between her and Sid, but I'll get into that in another video. Now, that arc itself, pretty self-explanatory. She thought Sid was kidnapped. She panicked. She went to the tower going to destroy the one that is basically being kind of resurrected and Shadow is the one that ends up saving her in that situation and it ends up being that in her eyes Sid was never there she just kind of misunderstood it which was really funny because there was a situation where she bumped into this girl called Mary and she's like oh yeah th there was these like two situations she's like oh there's this one guy that I met and then the other guy and they might be your brothers and he, she describes one being like this weird kid standing on the sidelines sort of laughing with the he 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 over a ghoul being beaten up and she's like oh no 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 that's not my brother and then the other one's like oh yes that's my brother basically being kidnapped taken to a town which it was kind of like actually the first one was your brother being really weird and creepy because she's like oh he's too that's too creepy so she goes to the tower does this big thing you learn a lot about her backstory and she ends up getting saved by a shadow which is of course drum roll we all know is Sid just stating the obvious but for her she doesn't know so I just thought it was really funny how that all played out. And then of course Shadow Garden was there as well doing their own thing. It's kind of like Sid or Shadow does one thing and then Shadow Garden's kind of always there kind of doing their own thing. But just miraculously he's always one step ahead even though he's not trying to be. So that arc I thought was interesting because I've heard a lot of people say that this is like the weakest volume. It's a fun volume but it does make me wonder if anything major from this will ever have a rippling effect later on other than just kind of like little bits and pieces of backstory into the lore of some of the characters that are currently more main prevalent part of Shadow Garden. Then you've got the whole second part which is with the White Fox girl that I just mentioned with the banking and the counterfeits so there's like three major groups. You've got the girl that has the Fox group that's a major group that has a lot of power and influence then you've got the shadow garden and them basically almost doing world domination with uh, selling products the banking system printing notes they've created like a note based system for currency instead of just having coins so it's a lot more easier and then you've also got the cult of diablo who runs their own group and them trying to plan or their plan is that they're going to actually print counterfeit money on their own to kind of create a collapse but they had this whole thing planned where they were going to do something first which was them yanking their own money out of their own system before they created the counterfeit and then collapsed everything which would then affect the shadow garden group but the funny part is is that Sid comes along and does the whole John Smith thing which I find as a funny reference it just reminds me of James Bond whenever I hear the word John Smith which I think that is what the reference is if I'm wrong I'm wrong but I, it just that's what reminds me of him doing that not realizing but ultimately ends up helping in the long term because the Cult of Diablo was planning to make counterfeit notes and collapsing everything but he ends up doing it ahead of time which destroys their scheduling plan which ends up collapsing them stealing the money from them that he also ends up keeping which the fox girl ends up joining the shadow gardens team with her group so it's like one big group but kind of split into two and they kind of work together but just the fact that unintentionally he had a plan ahead that had nothing to do with ultimately what ended up being what 
the cult was trying to do and it just all becomes a massive shamble it's so f weirdly hard to explain for me because i'm just maybe dumb but i just thought it was really funny how it always just it this is the thing this series reminds me of overlord a lot and i've been got i've gotten so much hate for saying that it's just because iron sometimes does things and he wings it and it just ends up going well but it's the same situation with Sid and Shadow, like he just does something and it works out m perfectly and then those part of Shadow Garden just sit there and go, oh my god, he's fought so far ahead, he's so ingenious, we just can't comprehend his true wisdom. And it just reminds me of the Floor Guardians with Overlord where Irons just says something and they're just like, we can't comprehend his true geniusness. That's why I find the two series kind of similar but different at the same time. In kind of like those little links like it's not saying that they're one-to-one -one the same but just those little subtle fun little similarities is what makes it so enjoyable and those moments where you can smile and have a little giggle and be like oh yeah you know they they truly don't grasp Sid's or Shadow's true scope of geniusness but in the reality he's just kind of winging it and it's just working out to his favor and that's the thing it, it all works out at the end he creates the collapse the cult of Diablo's banking whole system and corporation kind of collapses and that ends up leading to the shadow gardens becoming stronger and bigger and then with the other competing ended up working with them on the side it's just like world domination right there in in their hands and it just kind of makes me wonder sometimes it just feels like a fun parody of the kind of the over protagonist style story which i really enjoy and seeing this volume is very fun so i'd love to know people's thoughts in the comment section down below because i've heard some people saying that they don't like this volume which i don't know i enjoyed it mainly because i kind of like the fox girl she was just kind of cute and adorable especially with kind of trying to persuade him kind of showing some of the assets those kind of fun little things and i'm interested to see how this has a rippling effect into future volumes if it does because it does kind of feel like we won't hear too much of some of these characters other than kind of like sid won't ever or shadow won't ever meet whichever you want to call it will never meet the white fox girl but she'll always be there working alongside him but not really visible enough for him to see kind of like how uh 666 goes that chick who joined and yeah it just kind of you feel like they'll never meet again maybe they will maybe they won't i'll find out in future volumes i guess so again i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below as i noted i will be making follow-up videos going into more deeper dive as things go on especially with the anime and more story possibly to come and covering more of the light novels you know me i will be breaking down interesting components that i find fascinating so again tell me your thoughts love to hear them if you like this video hit the like subscribe and i'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.